History was made up on Capitol Hill today. Lawmakers unveiled the new statue of civil rights icon, educator, and women's rights activist, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune. Her family called this a full circle moment for them. It marks the first time in U.S. history a black American will represent a state in Statuary Hall. Dr. McLeod Bethune was instrumental in the civil rights movement. She was an educational trailblazer. She fought to gain freedom from discrimination and for better financial, political, and educational equality for black Americans. News 4's Derek Ward takes us inside the D.C. headquarters dedicated to some of Dr. McClune, Dr. McLeod Bethune's most important work. Just south of Logan Circle on Vermont Avenue stands the Washington nexus of Mary McLeod Bethune's work in the nation's capital. The Council House was Bethune's local residence from 1943 to 1949. The house was built in 1875, the same year she was born, and it will become the first national headquarters of the National Council of Negro Women. The groundwork for policy change was done here. Lynching, voting, health care, housing, education, integrating the public school system, integrating the armed forces. The parlor features a chandelier that one hung in the White House, furniture gifted by the owner of the Howard Theater, some of the material expressions of support, but even the piano, with whom played a little, was a means for advancing her causes. She would hold fundraising concerts accompanying vocalists who were also students at Bethune-Cookman University. This house is significant in a lot of ways. It was among the first three houses built on this part of Vermont Avenue, but the council house is a tribute to Mary McLeod Bethune's resourcefulness resourcefulness in navigating D.C. Jim Crow laws. African Americans, Bethune among them, couldn't stay at many of the city's hotels. So she opened the third floor of the home as boarding room spaces. And as her own home away from home, the house holds hints to the woman behind the iconoclast, the picture of her parents, former enslaved people. This cane, a replica of one that used to belong to FDR, a gift from Eleanor Roosevelt to Bethune. And she used the cane not for, uh, for health reasons, but for effect. She said it gave her swag. And standing with the likes of Eleanor Roosevelt, Josephine Baker, and W.E.B. Du Bois, they were among the more notable to cross the threshold of this 147-year-old house, all in furtherance of the cause, but also furtherance of a people. She walked with her head held high, and she would encourage, you know, all people, but specifically African Americans, to walk with their heads high. The National Park Service maintains Council House. It's open for tours Thursday through Saturday. And now with Bethune's story getting more attention, the National Park Service expects those tours to be even more popular. In Northwest, Derek Ward, News 4. All right, let's talk about a little more history here. Dr. Bethune's statue in the U.S. Capitol is actually right next to the statue of civil rights icon Rosa Parks. Parks' statue unveiled in 2013 is not part of the Statuary Hall collection, but it is still pretty incredible to have two women, civil rights giants, next to each other in that room.